And how about Andrew Wiggins, first time All Star? All Star? Yeah. What a quarter for Andrew Wiggins! I'm sure when I go down the locker room, there's going to be more love, so it's a special feeling. Look at Wiggins. So inspirational, man. Andrew Wiggins being named an all-star starter is one of the most inspiring stories for a number one pick ever. Not only was he called a bust for being compared to T-Mac and Kobe, but playing like an overhyped Jabari Parker, but his contract was considered one of the worst in the NBA. Now, he is a key piece to one of the best teams in the league and snagged one of the biggest honors for a basketball player. But how did Andrew Wiggins pull this off? Obviously, completely transforming his game going to the Warriors helped, but so did a sneaky all-star voting trick from the Warriors themselves. The way all-star voting works is two backcourt starters and three frontcourt slash bigs. Wiggins was the third place guy, according to the fans, AKA a starter. From the players, he was fifth, not a starter. From media, sixth, not even close. But that strong ballot made Wiggins a starter next to LeBron James and Nikola Jokic. The snubs for that third spot, Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns, and Wiggins teammate Draymond Green among others. And this is an interesting year because of injuries. Paul George, Anthony Davis, and Draymond have all missed time. Any one of those guys could have been a starter in a different year. Wiggins has played great for one of the best teams in the league this year, but make no mistake, the real story is not his play, it's actually about the vote. Just being on the Warriors helps. They're one of the most popular teams in the world, but also one of the best. Wiggins was initially drafted by the Cavaliers, but LeBron didn't have time to wait on his development. So they traded him for Kevin Love, and it's actually like a rare win-win trade. I mean, Minnesota restarted their rebuild with a huge prospect, and the Cavs eventually won a chip. Wiggins even won Rookie of the Year in Minnesota, and they got the number one pick the next year and got Carl Anthony Towns. Everyone was hyped about their future. Cat developed quickly, dropping an efficient 25 points his second year and getting an all-star in year three, but Wiggins, not so much. The Timberwolves expected him to be a future superstar, but he just never quite showed that. Most of his shots came in the mid range and he just wasn't good. I mean, I'm all for guys who are masters in the mid range like DeMar DeRozan or Jimmy Butler because they are elite, but Wiggins shot almost half his shots from the mid range, but made just 35%. Because of that, his true shooting percentage was 52%, a full three points below average. On top of that, he was a bad defender and playmaker, but the Wolves still gave him a max extension because of his potential. People always hoped every single year that he would eventually justify being that number one pick. The Wolves wanted to believe that, and they wanted to like, you know, build up his confidence, so they gave him a huge deal. All that did was make him one of the most hated on players in the NBA. Now people felt like it's okay to call Wiggins a bust. Who cares? He's super rich now. He can take it. He practically deserves it. Then at the trade deadline in 2020, the Golden State Warriors traded for Wiggins for D'Angelo Russell and the pick clearly a win for Golden State now when we look back on it. But at the time it was just like, meh. Wiggins, not that impressive. And the Warriors were still hurting from missing KD and Clay's ACL tear. What we didn't know is Wiggins was about to completely change how he plays basketball. The first difference is his role on the team. Not only is Steph Curry clearly the number one, but he's a point guard. In Minnesota, Wiggins had back-to-back -back years in the 96th percentile for usage rate. That number has dropped to 86 and 85 the last two years in Golden State. With the ball in his hands less, he thrives on offense and defense. He's scoring about 18 points a game, a career-high 48% from the field, and 41% from three on five attempts. Wiggins is taking, by far, his lowest volume of shots in the mid-range and from isolation. 
Most of his shots now come from assists. 90% of his threes come from a pass. That was just 79% in Minnesota. He's just one of five players in the league with at least 18 points on five plus threes and 40% from deep. Basically, he's gone from the king of an awful offense to a key part of a winning team. Draymond Green gets most of the love on D, but Andrew Wiggins takes on the other team's best player every night. For example, earlier this season, he held Jason Tatum to one for seven from the field. Then he forced John Morant to shoot two for seven with Wiggins as the primary defender. He's contested 358 shots this year, and he's holding opponents to 39% shooting. That is ninth best in the NBA. On average, Wiggins is turning the other team's best player into Garrett Temple or like Ty Jerome as a shooter. He has become a great two-way player for the first time in his career, but he would not be an all-star without a sneaky move from his team. The All-Star fan voting used to be 100% for starters. Warrior center Zaza Pachulia almost became a starter because of a huge random push from his home country, Georgia. Oh, no, 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 yes, sir. no, yes, sir. no. To avoid something really embarrassing like that ever happening, the NBA changed the voting. So now, 50% for starters come from fans, 25% of the vote from the players, and 25% from media. Now, even if Zaza got like first place from the fans, the players and the media would pull him down. For Wiggins, his player and media vote were decent, so the fans put him into the starting lineup. Here's how that happened. Last year, the Warriors partnered with K-pop superstar Bam Bam. He likes Steph Curry, wanted to get exposure to the US market, so it was a good deal. So Bam Bam agrees to play at Chase Center later this season and to trade social media posts. So the Warriors asked Bam Bam to put out this tweet voting for Andrew Wiggins on January 7th. That was a two for one day when one retweet counted for two all-star votes. And the damn thing took off. It became the number one social media post in Thailand and Wiggins shot way up the voting charts. Wow. Now I'm not saying that Andrew Wiggins doesn't deserve to be an all-star at all, but not a starter. I mean, I didn't put him on my all-star ballot at all, but I do think now he should get in because we have so many injuries. There will be no Paul George in the front court and no Draymond Green. Yeah, Andrew Wiggins should probably be there somewhere. But this story is about the fan vote. It is not about Andrew Wiggins' transformation. But if you wanna see my entire ballot, and yes, Andrew Wiggins is not on there, but we've had some injuries since then, uh, you can see who all my East and West starters are and my reserves and two wild cards. Check that video out right here.